Nepo babies are everywhere in entertainment these days. From Maud Apatow to Dakota Johnson to Nicolas Cage, one of your favorite actors is probably related to the Hollywood elite. A nepotism baby is the child of wealthy, well-connected parents who are famous or highly successful in the entertainment industry. And the Nepo baby experiences an expeditious ascent to fame, wealth, and success, at least in part thanks to their family's connections and status. I kind of fell into acting. It was never something that I sort of set out to do. I was at this gig and this lady came up to me and she was like, I love your look. She knew my mom. For some, the Nepo baby is an opulent fantasy. It's easy to imagine the delights of growing up as this figure with all their advantages and iconic connections. For others, discovering another Nepo baby feels like a betrayal, more proof that America's meritocracy is broken. I don't really agree with that, obviously, just because it takes away opportunities for other very talented actors that just don't have um, you know, the same influence in the industry. So what do these stars really say about inequality in entertainment and in America more broadly? Here's our take on why the Nepo baby inspires such strong feelings and what they tell us about ourselves. His viral, not viral videos being his big break. Or we could take into account his parents' decades long experience in the theater scene. Being born into a wealthy family comes with innumerable perks, like a robust safety net, a massive elite professional network, and an effortlessly glamorous lifestyle. But nepotism babies aren't a new phenomenon. They've been around for longer than Hollywood itself. The earliest moving images captured by the Lumiere brothers featured their own kids, the first literal nepo babies. And the child actors of the silent film era were often related to industry insiders. Take the Solax kid, Magda Foy, who was the daughter of two stock actors at the Solax studio. Even some modern-day Nepo babies can trace their roots back to early Hollywood. Drew Barrymore is the grandchild of silent film star John Barrymore, and Zoe Kazan is the granddaughter of Elia Kazan, a legendary director from the classical Hollywood era. He knew himself and that he was the person he answered to, and I think all of that is a really good example in terms of being an artist. So the Nepo babies of today are part of a long tradition of successful artists lifting up their relatives to create Hollywood dynasties. People like Maude Apatow, Sam Levinson, Billy Lord, Kate Hudson, Jake and Matt Maggie Gyllenhaal, these stars are all genuinely talented, but it's impossible to separate their success from their family. In addition to all their connections, Nepo Baby's names have a distinct commercial value. When my agents called up when I hadn't done any work yet, and they said to a casting director, I have a young actress here and she's Leah Kazan's granddaughter, I think they're more willing to see me. Jamie Lee Curtis went through a long audition process for her breakout hit, Halloween, and gave an acclaimed iconic performance in it. But she's very open about how her family helped her get the role. Given that, John and Deborah were such fans of Psycho. To have Janet Lee's daughter as one of the two, obviously it tipped it my way. Many of these stars make the counterpoint that while their names may have got them in the door, that didn't take them all the way, and they still had to earn their ultimate success. So I definitely think it like cracked open the door a tiny bit, but no more than that. There's an opportunity for people who feel slighted in their own lives to look at me and just say, well, that's nepotism. So perhaps one of the biggest benefits of being a Nepo baby is the informal education these kids get from being raised by parents who are at the absolute top of their field. Maude Apatow grew up on film sets and cut her teeth as an actress in Hollywood movies directed by her dad. That's a kind of learning environment most kids can only dream about. He knows how to talk to me and direct me well. Euphoria creator Sam Levinson's knowledge of cinematography and storytelling is no doubt informed by the fact that his father is the Academy Award-winning director of Rain Man, Barry Levinson. Most film students have to pay an arm and a leg for top-notch training in the craft, and even when they do, if they're not Sofia Coppola, they'd never get access to the knowledge and insights of a Francis Ford Coppola. I was lucky to have such a great teacher, and he, and it's funny, he gave me a, a book as a teenager. It was the Encyclopedia of Poetics, and he always talked about film as being Poetry. Jennifer Lopez's child is a naturally gifted singer, and it's great that they get to share their love of music with their mom. But for most kids, that means singing together at a talent show. And for Emmy Muniz, that means singing on stage at the Super Bowl. Let's get Zoe Kazan didn't just benefit from the Kazan name, she learned about the craft of acting from her screenwriter parents. I was given plays to read and movies to watch. They would talk to me about acting above all as a family of artists. With all these privileges, it's no wonder TikTok is full of people fantasizing about being a Nepo baby. But others feel let down when they learn their idols came from less than humble origins. 
so many opportunities in life are about being at the right place at the right time. So it can be frustrating to see nepotism babies who are born in the right place and constantly provided with the right times, especially when they refuse to admit they were put on a path to success by their families. The nepotism thing is ridiculous. It's like no one ever got a television show because their mother was like, you know, an alternative art figure in the 1980s and 90s. Some Nepo babies are aware of and acknowledge their leg up, along with the responsibilities that brings. I'm self-realized enough to understand. Someone would have thought, once the movie gets made and we have to go out and sell it, having Janet Lee's daughter playing Laurie Strode will help us. But others try to sell a misleading image that hustling and working hard alone got them to where they are today. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your f***ing ass up and work. It seems like nobody Nobody wants to work these days. This amplifies that feeling of being let down when a fan discovers their role model has Nepo baby origins. When someone has been presenting an image of themselves climbing up a pure meritocracy, it can change your whole view of them to discover they were actually born at the top. Just acknowledge it. One time just say, Yes, my parent is famous, and I am very grateful for the opportunities it has obviously afforded me. People also feel betrayed by Nepo babies if they don't consider those people talented or hardworking enough to deserve their level of success. You're telling me that you have parents who are two illustrators. You grew up in the industry, you go to like sets to visit your parents, and you come out mediocre. It can also seem like Nepo babies get endless chances to try and fail before they find their groove. Another thing that's great for them, but exceedingly rare for everyone else. On the other hand, the scrutiny around Nepo babies can get a little harsh. For example, when actors and creators who, despite their privileged starts, have proven themselves on their own merits, are headlined simply as Nepo babies. This can seem a tad vicious. In order to also hear the nepotism comments. I All had right. to be really confident in like my own skills and abilities and that, no, I put in the time. The Nepo baby may feel like they can't take risks and make mistakes without being subject to hyper-intense criticism. In fact, some genuinely talented Nepo babies have changed their names to distance themselves from their famous relative and avoid the constant comparisons. I changed my name because I was doing a little movie called Fast Times at Ridgemont High and I was still Nicholas Copeland and people would not stop saying things like, I love the smell of Nicholas in the morning because of Apocalypse Now. On social media, some people sort Nepo babies into two distinct categories, the deserving and the undeserving. We want to know which stars truly earned their success, but maybe we're asking the wrong question. Because what does it even mean to deserve your success? Can we truly judge that? And is that framing actually useful? The deeper reason critics of the Nepo baby feel betrayed is because nepotism shatters the illusion of the American dream. America is supposed to be the land of opportunity, where anyone can be anything if they work hard enough. Nepo babies are proof that isn't true. These systems should be meritocracies, and nepotism babies are a problem because they generationally keep the rich and privileged in power. But perhaps it was pretty naive that we ever expected it to be true in the first place, even when they're not Hollywood Nepo babies. Lots of celebrated talents in our culture today came from social and economic privilege. Taylor Swift's father was a wealthy financial advisor at Merrill Lynch, and he invested $300,000 in the label that Taylor was signed to at the start of her career. That's an investment that is impossible for most families. My dad's the one who's like, I had this crazy idea, or, you know, he's the daydreamer. Ariana Grande and Lady Gaga came from similarly affluent backgrounds. Their families didn't have a direct tie to the music industry, but Gaga's family sent her to a famous private school known for its well-connected alumni, and Ariana's parents could afford to let her live in Los Angeles to pursue her dreams at the age of 14. We were in your house, and we had a long conversation, and we said we're gonna work real hard and we'll put this music out, and our goal was to get you the number one album in the country. Hollywood dynasties may be a particularly visible instance of inequity, but they're far from the only reason the entertainment industries aren't meritocracies. The American dream has never been real. Success in America has always been tangled up in race, gender, and generational wealth. Interestingly, when the American dream was first coined, it didn't even refer to the idea that anyone could go from rags to riches. The phrase came to prominence thanks to progressive era reformers. Their dream wasn't to build a country where everyone had an equal shot of rising to the top of an unequal system, but to build a better, more equitable system. So if Nepo babies are the latest example shattering an outdated illusion about equality in America, maybe that means it's time to update our American dream. To fixate less on taking down a few high profile individuals and focus more on evaluating the broader system around them. Does it really matter so much if a few particular Nepo babies deserve their success? Or does it matter what they do with it? To be 
be a leader and a role model, I just hope to make people feel like they can be themselves. Favoritism and nepotism have always been a part of Hollywood, and pretty much all industries, and they're not going anywhere. But for as long as the Nepo baby has existed, there have been privileged stars who have used their platform to advocate for the real American dream, a more equitable and just society. I will continue to fight every day to spread a message that's actually quite simple. Be kind. Jane Fonda, daughter of Henry Fonda, leveraged her strong Hollywood connections to take politically unpopular stands for social issues that some of her peers could not take without risking their careers. So although the bombs are falling on Vietnam, it's an American tragedy. It's going to take the American people many, many years to undo the damage. She used her father's network to advance her career, but she lifted others up with her. For example, she made the iconic feminist comedy 9 to 5 after learning about working conditions for secretaries from a labor organizer. She would tell me stories that were just terrifying of how these women were treated. So my producing partner, Bruce Gilbert, and I decided we wanted to make a movie about it. Another Nepo baby, Mia Farrow's and Woody Allen's son, Ronan Farrow, used his platform and connections to aid his journalistic investigation of the abuses committed by celebrated Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. I don't think most people are aware of the exotic and extreme tools at the disposal of the most powerful and wealthy men in America. These Nepo babies walked a short road to success. Their success is proof that America isn't fair. But they've used their privilege to fight for fairness, and that's an American dream we can get behind. There was a petition for the Equality Act, which basically just says we all deserve equal rights under the law. Thank you for watching the tape. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you're watching.